first. Uh, what a hard act to follow. A really wonderful performance. Thank you so much for having this event. I, I have to say that the arts, I, I, I've really wanted to hear so much more about the arts in this campaign, and you're putting it on the map. So it, it's wonderful that you've done this. The other speakers all made amazing points. Um, the performers have all been outstanding, and the audience that you guys have sat here a long time, so thank you for doing that. Um, I first, I'm sorry Hillary couldn't be here. She's in California um, doing an event on um, global AIDS, and uh, she does send her best. Uh, I first got to know Hillary when uh, I started in the White House. I was her, uh, for her policy assistant, and I think maybe the first person ever to have that job as policy assistant to the First Lady, but she wasn't going to be any kind a normal first lady. Um, we shared a suite in the West Wing, and at the time I had a month old baby, and the baby spent a fair amount of time in that suite, and I, I can't even imagine a more kind and gracious employer than Hillary was in those days, so I'm thrilled to be able to represent her today. Um, I worked with her that first year, and, um, and then at the end of the administration, so I want to tell you a little bit about um, why I know that, you know, before we start talking about her positions on issues, which you've got, she's done a pretty um, detailed issue paper, and I know we're going to be taking back a lot of the ideas that we've heard today. Um, she's the kind of person who likes to have a dialogue. I remember when she was running for the Senate, the listening tour resulted in many, many calls back to the office saying, you know, this is what I heard. Isn't this important? And so um, consider this a stop on the presidential campaign listening tour. Um, when, before we talk about her policy positions, um, I wanted to tell you what I know from personal experience, the kind of priority she's put on arts and culture, and the kind of priority I know she would make these issues if she gets back in the White House in a different capacity. Um, she is not an artist herself, uh, but does come from a family that loves art. And of course, um, Bill Clinton is known for his saxophone playing, and Hillary never missed one of Chelsea's ballet performances, no matter what important thing was going on in the White House. Um, she herself, I, I've learned, took piano lessons for six years, but would be the first to say it's a good thing she found other callings. Um, another interesting thing that I remember from uh, working with her on her book is that her first date with Bill Clinton was uh, basically at an, the Yale Art Museum which happened to be closed at the time, uh, but Bill Clinton managed to talk the custodian into letting them in to see the Rothko exhibit in exchange for picking up some trash in the yard. <laughs> so a lover of arts from that day. Um, as First Lady, Hillary I know, took every opportunity to elevate the arts and culture in whatever way she could. The first year, it, was, it happened to be the year of American craft. And she got the idea that you know the, the White House is filled with wonderful artifacts of the decorative arts, the crafts of their day from the 17 and 1800s. Um, and the contemporary craft of America was something that she felt very strongly about. And she brought this, she, put, she worked with the Smithsonian to put together a wonderful exhibit um, and brought the, the craft collection to the White House. And, and I still remember seeing these wonderful blue vessels lined with gold sitting in, I think they were by artist Cheryl Williams, sitting in front of the portrait of, of Mamie Eisenhower. And, and, and that was the kind of thing that she loved to do. She, she decided that there wasn't enough sculpture in the White House collection and that uh, many people weren't familiar with American sculpture. So she created, uh, again, working with um, other experts in the field, uh, a, a rotating sculpture garden in the Jack, Jackie Kennedy Garden, which is when you, if any of you have ever been to the White House tour, there's like a colonnade and you can look out and see this lovely garden. Well, she filled it with sculpture and there were six exhibits. They were quite complicated to mount. She raised the money for them. And as a result, 10 million people who came to the White House as tourists had a chance to see a Calder and a Noguchi. And um, I still remember Deborah Butterf I think it was Deborah um, Butterfield's life-size bronze horses covered with snow. It was one of the most wonderful sights. Um, she created the Save America's Treasures program, where uh, she worked to highlight that many of America's amazing cultural and historical 
historical uh, landmarks were crumbling and needed the support of our communities. She um, made it possible for there to be federal support for this purpose, and she raised a, a lot of private money. Um, events at the White House. There's no guarantee that any um, president or first lady is going to do an event just because it's been done before and there's certainly a lot of competition to get on that schedule. And I, I think there was an arts event there every week. Um, she took the, uh, there, there's, there have been long been the Arts and Humanities medals. They used to be handed out in very, you know, so low-key, small ceremonies. She made it a huge event, expanded the number of people who could come, expanded the number of medals. Um, when we were celebrating the millennium, uh, the 2000, she uh, had a series of millennium evenings in the White House. One featured jazz, um, one featured poetry, and, you know, these were wonderful events, and she could not have been more excited or personally involved in selecting what the topics were going to be and who was going to perform. Um, I could go on and on and on. She brought, um, it was her, her, her idea to, um, when the, in the first year the administration, uh, the President's Committee on Arts and Humanities, um, they, President and Mrs. Clinton asked them to come up with a way to highlight the importance of the arts and culture and student development, and they came up with these Coming Up Taller Awards, which have been uh, you know, ongoing. Um, the Bushes have continued it, and, and she brought that ceremony to the White House because she saw it as being so important. Um, again, you know, there's the White House Conference on Philanthropy, the um, work she did with the Art and Embassies Program. She visited, as First Lady, she visited more than 70 countries, which a lot of people don't know. But she went there as a diplomat, essentially. And in visiting the embassies, it was so important, and she, I remember her talking about the, the American arts that were, were um, shown in these embassies as a result of the um, program at the State Department, and how that was, a, that was an important ambassadorial service for our country as much as any visit from uh, any of the diplomatic corps. So I, I don't want to talk too much about First Lady, because that's not, you know, she's not running for First Lady. Um, but I think it's important to understand where she comes from um, when she's thinking about these policies. She's not coming here, uh, she's, not, she's not thinking about um, arts policy as something that needs to be done to appease a constituency. It's coming from her heart as somebody who's a great lover and appreciator of the arts. And she, um, so the things that she's done in the Senate uh, include being an original co-sponsor of the Museum and Library Services Act of 2003, which authorized millions for America's libraries and made it possible for cultural institutions to obtain insurance for, to host high-profile exhibits, which is an important issue. She's co-sponsored the um, Art Artist Museum Partnership Act to allow artists to deduct the fair market value of their um, works when they donate them which is currently not the case. Um, and she's thought about the arts. I mean, I was really excited to hear the mayors talking about art and as a form of economic development because that's what she's tried to do working with the um, communities in Western New York, which has been very depressed. And one of the important things they've done is, uh, and, and um, Senator Clinton has worked hand in hand with these communities, is use the arts to elevate um, the uh, economics, whether it's through the Finger Lakes Trading Cooperative to create a wider market for the crafts that are, are produced in that region, or um, working in Buffalo to secure funding to develop affordable living and workspaces in a renovated factory for artists because affordable uh, workspace and housing is clearly tremendously important. Um, and this year she's been working to get money for Buffalo's urban art centers. Um, again, you know, these are just examples of things that show that she gets the connections that you all are making. Um, finally, I know that the federal funding point is, a, is probably your most important issue, and she's long been a strong supporter for all of the various programs, and there aren't enough of them, but there are some that support arts and humanities and endowments, as well as um, Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Arts education, as I mentioned, is you know, near and dear to her heart. It, it's, um, one study showed that one out of every five public schools has cut their arts programs, art and music programs, as a result, since, maybe not as a result, but one could draw a conclusion, since No Child Left Behind was enacted. So um, we've got some work to do there, and she's really been a champion in speaking out about how important it is for there to be funding for arts programs in schools.
I want to close with some words from an op-ed that um, Senator Clinton wrote for the New York Times when she was first lady in support of the NEA. And I think these words are as true today as they were then. One of the great successes of the arts in America is that they are not the preserve of any cultural elite. Federal support for the arts helps attract tourists, stimulate business, expand the tax base, and improve the quality of life, a huge return on a small investment. If public support for the arts disappears, those most affected will not be the richest Americans, but the millions of citizens who rely on the NEA to bring the arts to their local schools and communities. Opponents fail to appreciate what every generation of Americans has intuitively known that the artistic imagination is critical to our civilization and our democracy. They forget the prescient words of John Adams. I must study politics and war that my sons may have liberty to study mathematics and philosophy. My sons ought to study mathematics and philosophy in order to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, and music. I hope that you will support Hillary Clinton because I know that she will support you if she's elected president. She supports the things you stand for, and uh, again, we are very grateful to be included in your forum and look forward to hearing the other speakers.